Preferably, yeah. yeah. All that sugar in your tea. He has whipped cream. Is it whipped cream on it? Oh, great. It's not whipped cream. Rain it's a London it fog. It's, it's, it's frothed frothed London milk. fog. It's frothed milk. Whipped cream on it. Oh, great. You piss <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll win you over. Hey, I'm Matt, and we're here at the 2021 Pink Bike Summer Field Test in Sun Peaks. You might know We Are One Composites from their Canadian-made carbon rims. Well, with our field test being so close to their headquarters just down the road in Kamloops, we couldn't pass up the opportunity to get a hold of the new Arrival. It's their 29-inch wheel bike, which has 152 mils of rear wheel travel. That's a little bit less travel than the rest of the test fleet, but there's more to a bike than just the amount of travel that it has. This is We Are One's first endeavor into building a frame. The construction and the complete bike is assembled in-house and uses upcycling to reduce waste. All of the materials used for the frame, including three types of carbon, aluminum links, titanium hardware, stainless steel bearings, and the rubber protection, all come from within a 500 mile radius of Kamloops. In our test, Henry and I are riding the medium slash large size, which has a reach of 475 millimeters. The head angle sits at 64 degrees and the seat tube is a nice 77 degrees. These numbers are fixed because there are zero geometry adjustments. The arrival uses two short co-rotating links that deliver 152 mils of travel. Both of the builds feature a 160 mil Fox Factory 36 and a Float X2. That's enough about the details. Let's get into how this bike performs. Okay, it's time to talk about the We Are One and how it climbs. Let's get right to it. I did the efficiency test on this bike. It had the fastest time. It was two minutes flat, uh, a three or four seconds quicker than a couple other bikes. But what is the story on the trail, on the single track? How does this thing climb? Oh man, yeah, it's pretty dreamy. It's very light. Seat tube angle is a nice steep 77 degrees. 32 pounds. 32 pounds. It does have somewhat short chain stays for a medium large mm -hmm. at 437 but i never found traction was a problem to get the low front end helped a lot here and yeah the thing was just a mountain goat yeah henry similar it, you know there are so many times that people say oh the small bump sensitivity with the mid stroke and the end stroke support oh, yep and it, you know normally you just there's a collective eye roll yeah. i think that we are one actually because does stake a good claim to that mm -hmm. and um climbing it's nice because it's a bike that Yes, it does climb well seated and it does grip, but if you want to just hover your weight above the saddle to kind of really position it in the center, it still has that platform. Yeah. It's, it really impressed me. So what about in the tight stuff? Uh, we have longer bikes, we have bikes that are slacker. How does this compare to those in the tight, tricky climbing sections? Yeah, it's a little bit shorter. So yeah, really easy to maneuver the bike through tight switchbacks, get all your timing over like little lunges and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really no issues here. Really good seated position. And like Henry said, you can get out of the saddle and you still get traction and the bike's not gonna squish or squat out on you. Right. Uh, so there's no adjustment on this bike whatsoever. And so if you're fighting reach and you're a bigger guy and you're always looking at the reach versus the stack number and you need to get your bars up higher, uh, it is gonna take away from the reach eventually, even if you use a high rise bar. Okay. So guys, before we move on from climbing, it sort of sounds like this is an enduro bike for someone who doesn't want a bike like the Norco, like someone who still cares about the climbing and it isn't just about, I'll get there when I get there. Maybe they want to do a big day of pedaling. Yeah, I mean, I think that this, of the five bikes we have, this is actually quite similar to the Capra. And in a lot of ways, I know this is gonna maybe tread on a few toes, but I think it's what the Capra wants to be. Yeah. It has that small bump, it has that, I mean, we're gonna talk about it later, but I can't really say enough good things about the suspension platform. I think it's a really, really cool. The dual link system used the on the arrival. Link, yeah, it, it manages to combine so many enviable traits in one package. Yeah. And I think for something short travel, it uses it to travel really well. And it doesn't need to go to 165 mil, yeah. such as the YT, but still manages to give a comparable, if not better feel. Right. 
Matt, would you agree with that? It sort of gets the most out of the travel that it has? Yeah, totally. I mean, you mentioned pedaling all day. That's essentially what an enduro race is. So this thing is super efficient and it's just really balanced. The suspension does have all of those characteristics. And I was really impressed from the get-go. I knew these guys weren't gonna miss a beat when they built this bike. Okay, talking about how the We Are One gets the most out of its suspension is probably a good time to move on to descending. And I don't think I'm too out of line in guessing that if the bike was the best climber of the bunch, it's probably the least best descender. Matthew? Yeah, you might think that. But I might think wrong. Surprised. <laughs> yeah, it went almost as fast as the YT, just squeaked out by like a tenth of a second. So it was the second fastest Correct, yeah. On our timed course. It was faster than the Norco high pivot bike. It was faster than the GT high pivot bike. By three seconds. It was faster than the 170 millimeter travel enduro that we all like so much that we brought as a control bike. Why do you think that is? Well, this is a pretty efficient bike. It's really snappy. When you pick this thing up, it's super light as well. When I got on this bike, it was really important to make sure that I set it up with a 23 to 25% mm -hmm. sag. That's. I'm gonna stop you there. Yeah. That's interesting because that's actually a bit less than we see on some enduro bikes that are 30 to 35%, and the bike has less travel. In my mind, that should equal a rougher, slower ride. So tell me why it doesn't. Well, once I got my own bar and stem on there and I was comfortable with the cockpit setup, yeah, this thing really came alive. I felt a little bit more at home, and that's when I laid down the fastest time. And it was just so efficient in the travel. It's crazy, you know, to use that 152 mil travel against all the other big bruiser bikes out there. It just stays up in the travel and has support when you want to pump through corners or over like an upcoming obstacle. Really lightweight to pick up. And then again, yeah, that lightweight, easy to throw into corners. All right, so what would your favorite cliche terms be for the We Are One's handling? Would you say it's playful and nimble and all of those things? It's definitely nimble. It could be playful but it's also pretty planted too. Yeah, well that was my next question actually. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss this over to Henry. Can this bike really hold a line like the bigger travel, more relaxed, longer bikes can? It's so hard because I think we've been waxing lyrical about how impressive are the suspension system. You know, if there's any way that I could transplant that system mm -hmm. to the geometry of the transition, that would be a really interesting possibility. So it would help us isolate things a bit more. Yeah. I think it offers a lot I think that it tracks really well considering how efficient it is. And I yeah. think it handling is very good regardless of that. Yeah. You know, talking about cliches, this thing can turn on a dime. It's, yeah. it's really, really impressive. So both of you guys have mentioned how efficient the bike uses its rear suspension. You mentioned that the relative light weight of the bike, it's 32 pounds for an enduro -y type bike. That really helps. It's a little steeper, a little quicker handling. What I want to know is on the trail, does it feel as solid as a bike that weighs five or six pounds more? Is there any flex? Is there any weird things going on that yeah. you, were, you could tell? I know sub, like flex can be subjective, but yeah, this thing just felt really nice. Never had any weird chatter or like moments where it stepped out over choppy terrain. Mm -hmm. And then it's also really quiet. Like the chain never slapped. I was pretty surprised because there is nice armor there, mm -hmm. some rubber protection, but it's not a massive amount and it does go through the seat stay and the chain stay in sort of a tight spot, but yeah, really quiet ride. Next up, we're gonna talk about component spec on the arrival. I'm gonna start with you, Matt. Yeah. What did you like? Well, this is the We Are One arrival bike. It obviously comes with a bunch of the We Are One components like the bar and stem, but the union rims, Man, these things are nice and stiff, but vertically compliant. I know a lot of those things get tossed around the nomenclature and mm -hmm. yeah. That's the cliche of exactly. cliches, Matt. Exactly. But I mean, if it applies, it applies. But these things really work. Um, they're pretty bomber and they're, they really suit this bike. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I really loved is the Eagle drivetrain. I'm a SRAM shifting fanboy, and I just love the, the low leverage of that and the snappy feel. Yeah. yeah, really light action. There was another interesting component spec on this bike, and that's the Magura brakes. We don't see those a lot on bikes. What did you think of them? Well, 
You don't see them a lot, but I do because they're on both of my personal bikes. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, they do have some drawbacks, but I would put these as a pro. I think they just have incredible power modulation and I really love the light lever action and it just bites the, the rotor really quick, but it's in a controlled way. What about the cockpit, Henry? Uh, you know, I've said this before. I really, I really like everything. I, I, I really respect and admire this bike. Yeah. But the handlebars. I like what them. What the Jeff? Why didn't you like I, them? I, well, the peculiar shape. I felt that the, the back sweep came really late. I felt- Your hands end up in the same place though. They're just no, a different shape. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. I, I have some on my bike at home. This is what we had on the GT as well. Great bike. Yep. Yeah. Just rein it in with the kooky handlebars for goodness sake. And it might be that I need to ride it for a month and get used to it. I'm not adverse to that. Yeah. But hopping between these bikes, it definitely muddied the water. Yeah. And I think only when I sat it on a control set handlebars was I able to isolate some of the good and bad characteristics of each bike to a greater extent. One last thing, you made a note about the SDG seat post, which worked okay, but it didn't go deep enough into the frame, did it? Yeah, you'd prefer, I don't know if necessarily the collar to bottom length of the SDG seat post yep. being exceptionally long, which I kind of doubt. It felt like the frame could do with a slightly, slightly more insertion depth. Okay. Um, it's not the end of the world. I think it will probably be fine for most riders, but it might just be a small grievance of some others. Okay. All right, on to models and pricing. We Are One is a relatively small company. Yep. They're making the frame just down the road in Kamloops, and accordingly, they're offering just two different specs. Ours, well, we're slumming right now, 8,900 bucks. What do you think, Henry? That's a lot of money for a bike. I mean, also, there's something else that is cool. I believe, Matt, you were telling me that every part is sourced within, how many mile radius of here? 500 mile. 500 mile. That's, that's neat. Is this? you know, 50% better than the transition. The transition being six grand. Yeah, so that's no, that's a fair thing to say for sure. But I think there were a lot of eight, nine, ten thousand dollar $10,000 bikes that are made overseas somewhere. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that for sure. But with this bike, you're getting something different. The story behind the bike is yeah. pretty amazing. No, you're absolutely right. You know, I'm not saying that this bike isn't worth $8,900. I'm saying it wouldn't be worth $8,900 to me. That's fair. I think it's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah you know how much Tim Hortons I would buy? That's like at least two weeks worth of Tim Hortons. Okay, it's time for pros and cons. And the big pro for me, look at this thing. It is gorgeous. This is the kind of bike that you're done riding it. You lean it against the wall and walk away. And I turn around and look at it just for a couple of minutes and be like, mm. It is by the back of your hand good looking. Right? It is a very good looking bike. And that's important. If you're spending we know it is a lot of money, but I kind of think they've done it right in some ways. Yes, it is expensive, but it is gorgeous. It's got boutique parts on it. It's not like they're just throwing anything on. It's got like the Magura. It has it's a story the, behind it. It has a story behind it. I think that's really cool. There are other things I like about this bike too. Yeah. You know, it, it shows that you don't need huge amounts of travel to have a great performing bike. Mm -hmm. And I think it also probably highlights how sometimes large amounts of travel papers over the cracks of a slightly inferior suspension system. Right. Would you also say that a pro might be that it is relatively versatile for being in a, you know, enduro-ish bike? I think it is. I mean, I think it basically, this is like a really good kind of shining example of what the mid-travel 29er could be. Yeah. It climbs, it descends, it does it all for like that kind of quiver killer, which is a kind of phrase that sort of dropped out yeah. nowadays, but it, it genuinely holds a, holds a light to that. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's the good stuff that we liked. It's time to talk about maybe some things that could be improved. Matt, the bringer of bad news. Oof. Yeah, if we want to be really critical, we could point out maybe the low front end and handlebar combo. We talked about it quite a bit, but it is something you could change. So kind of a con for now. Mm -hmm. um, the other one would be also on the fence with pros and cons. There's no geometry adjustment. That's a good thing in my books. Well, I mean, if you want a longer chainstay on the smaller sizes, there's only one option. It does grow for the larger two sizes. Yeah. Um, the other would be the price. Again, yeah, a barrier to entry here. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, carbon only. Um, but Made that's just down whole, the road. Yeah, it's I mean, amazing. It's it's pretty incredible, but it's yeah a lot of money. So that's going to hold some people back on this one. Okay, I think that's that's fair.
All right, we're gonna wrap this up with who the We Are One Arrival best suits and the terrain that it best suits. So let's start with the rider. Henry, what type of rider would this bike do well for? I think this is like a trail bike on steroids. Yeah. It, it's not to say that it can't tackle the enduro stages. They've got that EWS youngster that's killing it at the moment. It's obviously a really capable bike. But I think somebody that basically probably is never gonna ride a chairlift. Mm -hmm. You know, probably that someone's very happy pedaling everywhere and wants something that is going to basically, yes, have the security to get down the gnarly stuff, mm -hmm. but also not completely dull out the slightly less yeah. rough stuff. So Matt, what type of terrain best suits the We Are Run arrival? Where would you like to ride this bike if you were going riding right now? Man, I would really like to ride this bike in Squamish, where you have a lot of ups and downs, big days on the pedals, Mm -hmm. but it's still gonna handle all those hard G outs. It's gonna be nice and fun through the corners, lots of jumps. Yeah, it's a, it's a stiff, but still forgiving bike. All right, that is it for We Are One's brand new arrival. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos, including the Huck to Flat, the Impossible Climb, and all sorts of other stuff. And we're gonna see you in the next video. Bye.